Welcome to this week's episode of the CC Mouse Podcast. We are good for your ears. I'm Dan, and as always, you can find me at RFS Dan. And I'm Jess, and you can find me everywhere at Snow Dogs Vlogs and Gone to the Snow Dogs. So exactly one week from this release, Jess will be making her way to sunny California, where her and I will be attending Vid Summit for three days. Then on that Friday, we're going to head off to sunny Disneyland. Well, we hope it's sunny anyway. So we have a very special guest this week, our friend Joel. You can find him on Instagram at Joel the Geek. He's into cosplaying, pop fig. Do you live close to the pop fig factory? That's no fair. I do live close to Funko's headquarters. It's called the Funko HQ. Man, you it's made like it. an old department store, and all the floor, the first floor is just a retail store, but it's not like a retail store where you go in and there's aisles of Funkos. They made them themed, so there's a themed area for, like, anime and cartoon, and there's a themed area for, like, all the different things. I have a I have a video on my YouTube channel. You can go check that out. Yeah, too. go check it out. You guys will be amazed to see how rad it is there. If there's a figure you can't find, I'm sure you could probably find it at that place. Yes. If not, there's lots of places around, like, the comic book store I go to is a block from there. So sometimes people will go to the Funko shop. They can't find it. They'll go over that comic book store and they'll find it. <laughs> it's 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 crazy. You go to a lot of conventions and they're all local. They all seem like they're within yes. like an hour of each other. Even here in LA, we don't get that dense of a like a get a you, gathering like that. Actually, in the LA area, if you don't include San Diego, you have about I think four or five. See, that's in a year. That's not much. You would think there'd be one. You're going to one like every weekend. It does feel like that. Yes, there are some going on. There was actually someone made a list that they posted for um, on a Facebook group. I can't remember the name of the Facebook group is, but there's one at least every month and they can get a very specific, very niche conventions. Um, I have a friend. She actually worked at a, a convention that was for people into My Little Pony. So like a brony convention. I'm in. I just covered my mouth. I'm in. I'm in. I watched a Brody documentary. I'd, I'd go. I'd go. This, they should, you should title this episode Dan the Brony. Dan the Brony. Oh yeah, right. Gosh. Oh, please. Please don't. Please, please don't. So we brought Joel here today as our official Disneyland aficionado person, even though I live... I was born in Garden Grove. I was born like what? minutes from Disneyland. I've been there in my life maybe four or five times. I've got a picture of me when I was five on Autotopia. And then I didn't go again until I was like uh, like 17, 18 years old. And then maybe once when Blake was little. Yeah, wow, man, man, maybe I've only been there three times. But you, Joel, you go there multiple times a year. Yes, um, I started going once a year because me and a friend, we had the same birthday. And we found out that Disneyland... Back in the day, about like 15, 20 years ago, let you go to Disneyland for free on your birthday if you live in Southern California. Nice. At that yes. time, I was still living in Southern California because I'm from San Diego originally. And so we started doing that, and then they stopped, and we just kept going. So <laughs> They sucked you in. <laughs> they yeah. did. And then for a while, when I was in grad school, I lived close by um, Disneyland, so I had an annual pass for about three years. And so I went multiple times during that phase of my life. So, but nowadays I just mainly go down there around my birthday time, which happens to be around Christmas. So the only time in the last 15 years, the only time I've been to Disneyland has been around Christmas time. So I don't see it when it's like not Christmas themed. <laughs> but that's cool though. You fly in, you hit Disneyland yeah. and then you're out of there. Like you, you, it's almost turn and burn, right? Like you're almost going it's, down there it's just a few for that. Days. It's not just one day. Like there were times in the past when I lived down there, we would drive up there for a day. But nowadays we spend like at least three days at the parks. See, oh, I wish we had three days. <laughs> oh, that would be so cool. Let's just not go to Vid Summit. Go to Disneyland. Let's just go to Disneyland. Go to Disneyland, Disneyland go, yeah. Go to Knott's Berry Farm. Uh. <laughs> yeah, okay, Universal. We could just go and hit the, the trifecta. And you said something that was interesting. You said that uh, back in the day you would get to go into the theme parks for free on your birthday. Yes. Before they price gouge you. Same with Disney. Or, um, sorry, Magic Mountain. You used to go to Magic Mountain, and at the end they would stamp your your ticket. It was called a Twicket, and uh, you could come back in the next like yeah, you could come back like in the next two weeks for free. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're, crazy. the funny thing is when you buy a ticket for Disneyland, it's not actually for the day you want it. It's for that week. So if you don't buy, if you buy it on that day and you don't go in that day, you have a week to use that ticket. And then the money's just theirs. And then it's just there. You have the ticket for that use. And if you don't use it within that week, you're, it's done. Wow. Walt Disney. That, that's what, that was in Walt Disney's will. They're like, fine print. <laughs> it was on the back. It was on the back. It's like, oh, by the way, guys, in 55 years from now, <laughs> this is what I want to see. This is what I want to see happen at Disneyland. And when I purchased my ticket 
I did notice that I had to pick the days because it was a different price on each of the days to go. Yes, because there's different days that are more expensive and then weekends. And if there's anything super duper special going on, then you have that to worry about. And then on top of that, if you want to get special tickets for something special that's going on after hours or at a certain time, like they have they have magic hours, like you can go after mm. they close the park officially, but it's still open to people who pay mm. extra and you can get like food and everything like that. Or they have... Um, they have hours in the morning that you can come in earlier than everyone else and you can be there for what they call rope drop where they have like a section of the, of the, the theme park closed off and they have a rope and you get to hear all this music and hear an announcer and then they drop the rope and everyone goes running into the park. Really? Have you been there for that? I do that. Yeah. Is it like Black <laughs> Friday? Because here's the deal. I'll run on an angle and fall to the ground. I'll take out a half a dozen. You two run and get good spots in line. <laughs> And then I'll That's catch up to you. Yeah. I, I admit. What about you, Jess? How many times have you been to Disneyland? I have only been once, and it was Christmas time. It was the when we first moved to Arizona, and we I, we didn't have enough money to go home. My aunt decided to get Jamie and I tickets to Disneyland and fly us to California from Arizona. So we've I've only been once. Wow! How That's long it. ago? Uh, it would have been two thousand. So okay. 19 years ago. Oh wow! <laughs> when you were going a lot there, has yeah, a lot has a lot has changed. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. A lot has changed just in the last year. See, right? the last time I went, Blake was eight, I think, and he's 18 now. So it's been 10 years for me. Whoa! Wow, wow. 10, 10, 10 quick, 10 quick years. Holy cow! When you went there, Jess, did they have the mainstream Main Street Electrical Parade? I don't. I don't remember. I don't think they we probably stayed had it then. But yeah, I don't know. At certain times of the year, so in the Christmas time, it's not there. So I've been so many times, but I've never seen that parade. <laughs> really? I remember so seeing it when I was a kid. Never seen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember, and then I remember when they discontinued it. They're like, and it's out. And I think they sold the light bulbs from it. I think at one point, and during my childhood, you could purchase the light bulbs from the Main Street Electrical Parade. Yeah, they were doing a, a thing where you could buy. Supposedly, there were light bulbs from the parade. But they actually moved the parade. They upgraded a lot of the stuff, and they moved it to Walt Disney World for a long time. Oh, then they stopped okay. doing it. Then they brought it back to Walt Disney World, and then they were like, okay, we're bringing it back to California. So then they brought it back to California. And it was at California for a very long time, and then they upgraded it again. And then they're like, hey, we're going to make a new show, and we're getting rid of that completely. People didn't like that. So they made the new show, and then they started the other, and then brought back the other one for nostalgia's sake. So the other one was at Disney California Adventure for a while, and then they had the new – a Luma Magic show, which was like all these LED lights and moving parts and everything, and it looked like it looked like Tinkerbell was floating in the air and stuff. So I'm, I'm in, I'm in. I love nostalgia. You can't go wrong. It's a win-win situation for my memories, for their pocketbooks. Like it's it's yeah. it's a win-win. Have you been to Disney World? Um, I'm actually going this year for the first time. Really? How many days? Because if I go, I need to spend, spend like a month there, right? Otherwise, I'll be it's unfulfilled. Five days. I'm gonna be there five days. Ooh, wow. That's gonna and be a park so each awesome. day. Um, I just sat down with my friends and we figured out our itinerary and we sent it to the person that's helping us. We're using this place called Mickey Travels. It's a free travel agency that just does and helps people plan their trips to Walt Disney World or Disneyland or any of the parks. And so they helped us set everything up and they got us like a bunch of discounts. Um, and so it's been really great. And so we're staying in one of the suites in one of the smaller um, resorts and it's a Finding Nemo theme. Oh, God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And so we're really excited to go for the first time, and we've got everything settled, and we got everything figured out. With with Walt Disney World, it's a lot more about reservations and making plans ahead, whereas Disneyland, you don't have to do that as much. Disneyland, it's less like, okay, you need to make reservations for food, you need to make reservations for the, the fast passes you want. Mm. You don't have to do that with Disneyland mm. yet. But Disneyland, it's more about, if you do want to eat at like one of the sit-down restaurants, you do need to make a reservation. If Which, not, by wait, the way... Did you do that, Dan? I tried to. Okay, look, here's what happened. I wanted uh, to go to this Bayou restaurant. Have you been in there? The one that's okay, inside there? The Bayou is so fun. I oh, see, memorable. now I hate this. Okay, so you don't have to have a reservation, but you're going to wait forever. Yes. Um, but I tried to, and it was just all booked up for that day for reservations. But I want to, okay, am I guaranteed to at least sit out there where I can see the people on the ride? So most of the, most of the, most of the tables are close to the water. So if you're on the ride or you're on the, at the restaurant, the restaurant is literally in the ride. Yes. So it's a big giant domed room, and the ride um, 
place where you get on the ride and the restaurant are in the same exact spot. So the, the boats you're on for the ride go right past the restaurant. You can see everyone sitting there eating. Yeah, since I was they a, can see you on the ride. Since I was a child, I always wanted to go there. And I didn't know if it was movie magic or real. And then I Googled it. And everybody says you have to go there, but I don't want to spend three hours in line waiting for the food ride, but I really want to go in there. Maybe I can shove my way in there and just go in there. Well, you can always call every day if you want to to see if any openings occur. There's a number. Sometimes might have an opening occur. Oh, see, maybe maybe there's still a chance for us. We have to eat a Monty, a Mickey Cristo. Monty Cristo? Yeah, I don't know what that is, but everybody says we have to eat you one. You don't know. You don't know what that is. You want a Monty Cristo? No, let me guess. is really yummy. It's like turkey and cheese and ham. It's in bread, and it's been, like, dipped and fried. Oh, I'm in. <laughs> you had me at dipped and fried. The thing is, did you fried. try to get dinner reservations, or did you try to get lunch reservations? I clicked on it every single time, and then it comes up, and it's smart now. It helps you out. It's like, hey, between between noon and yes. 5, it is there's no go. And then, then I clicked on the other stuff, and it's like, between 5 and 8, it is no go. So maybe <laughs> uh, maybe this is going to have to be something I'm going to have to do in the future. And I don't feel like I'm allowed to go to Disney World until I've conquered Disneyland. Do it. Yes, that makes sense. Yes, we're, we're not hitting California Adventures. I've never been there. I kind of don't have okay. a desire to go there. Okay, that's what I was going to ask you. Is, did you want to just go to one park or both parks? Because if you have a day, it's better to just go to one park. They try to upsell this park hopper ticket. Mm -hmm. It's extra hundred dollars or oh, more to your ticket. Wow. So you can go to both parks. But the thing is, if you it's 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 like a small city. It's like if say you wanted to go to where Jess lives and spend all day in the city and then leave and then come back three hours later and spend all day in the city because it's a small city. Oh, like, right. Isn't that a small city? Dang. And California Adventure is a small city right next to each other that you pay to go into. Dang. I could just yeah. hear the song now. M-O-N-E-Y, M-O-U-S-E, <laughs> Money Mouse. <laughs> it's Money Mouse. It's true. That's not funny. Holy the cow. Is, it's everything's in most everything's there that you want to do and it's really fun so when you talk when you're talking earlier about the morning thing it's called magic morning mm -hmm. so you get in early and you get to get to the park early before everyone else does and it's only on select days so you have to check the day that you guys are going to see if magic morning is available okay so, i i did have that option but i did not have that option until i purchased a third day pass so after oh, i no. after i pit after i purchase three days of passes not three separate tickets oh, but right. I need yeah, yeah then then they give days. you an, oh, that sucks. yeah they give you an option to have one of those days only be a magic morning a mickey morning yeah. a money morning you purchase three day, four day or five day passes to get oh, a magic morning see, bummer that's not that's not that's not what we're gonna we're gonna have there so we got our tickets i had to take out a loan I, uh, a couple different finance companies came through and it, it, they're all did you disney sell based. your soul to the mouse devil yeah they're all disney based finance companies so yeah so we got the tickets i got a 40 dollar parking pass oh cow yeah Wait, uh, you got a 40 dollar parking pass oh i think it was like 20 25 or 30 yeah, i think say, parking's 25 dollars i don't it, know what you're talking about is it 25 dollars yeah so parking's 25 dollars and we'll take the bus i hope that's free <laughs> Uh, so when you get there, the parking lot has a little tram that you take to the parks. And then when you get there, you have to go through a security checkpoint. And it's not like TSH security checkpoint. They, like, have you open your bag, look in it, and then you walk in. And they may pull some people to go through a, a, a metal detector, but it's not like a giant metal detector. It's one of those skimpy little things. So I suggest if you're going to go to the park, have one person have a backpack that you can put snacks in and battery packs and stuff like that Ooh, yeah, and okay. water because they do have snacks in the park and yeah there's those fun snacks like popcorn and churros and turkey legs but if you want like an apple or some grapes or something like that it's five dollars for an apple holy cow i mean i guess so it was it was from a disney movie yeah it already comes <laughs> it already comes with a bite taken out of it they're like if we just take one bite out of every apple then that's 20 more apples that we could sell that day so if you want to have snacks to eat during the day so you're not having to spend a lot of money on food, have one person be the backpack person or you have one backpack that everyone shares carrying. Okay, I can, have, I can do like, that. snacks in for everyone to eat that they want to eat because then that's one less thing you're buying or purchasing from the park. I don't want to be I, hangry. I did, get, I did get a really cool Nightmare Before Christmas backpack that I ordered for the trip. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll wear it. I'll wear you're it. You're going at the right time for it because it's, right? it's Halloween. It's Everything is decked out for Halloween. When you I know. park, just as you go past the train, there's a ginormous Mickey pumpkin head in the, the town square. 
And we will wait in line to take photos in front of that. Yeah, okay, that oh, sounds that's, cool. That, that's a cool thing to do. So they have this thing. So you guys need to get the app on your phones. I, I, I do have that. I'm apt up. So if you look on the app, there's this thing called Max Pass. Mm. We got that, didn't we? Yes, because we have the app or something. Yes, yeah, so we do have a Max Pass. But what is the Max Pass? The Max Pass allows you to get fast passes for rides faster than if you have to go up to the ride, use your pet ticket, put it in the machine, and wait in a line to get the ticket or get the fast pass, and so then come back to take go through the, the lines for the for the rides. Okay. So, but it also allows you to do their pictures. Like they'll take pictures. Like when you go up to take a picture in front of some scenery or something, they'll use your camera for you. But they'll take a picture with their cameras, the photographers, and using the Max Pass allows you to have access to those photos. You can download them onto your socials, and then you can add like backgrounds and extra things. And the coolest thing is the photographers will tell you, "Okay, stand like this or point at that," and ah, then they'll nice. add in. Thing. Oh, that'll be gotcha, fun. gotcha. In front of the crit, when you're in front of the, the castle, they'll have you point and look in shock or like surprise, and then they'll add in like Tinkerbell floating there or <laughs> something else. Is that included, or like do we have to like pay for the pictures? No, you're pay when you pay for your max pass, it, it includes that. Oh, I'm Yay! so in. Okay, can, like, yeah, it's the best thing in the world, and they're there to use and have for a while. They keep them on the site for a while, it'll tell you, hey. They're gonna, we're gonna be deleting those soon. So if you want to download them, download them so that, that you have access to them. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to take my flash, my Splash Mountain picture. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. It'll be Flash Mountain. <laughs> so I have more questions about this Max Pass, and this is something that I couldn't figure out. Okay, so from what I understand, when you have a regular pass, you have to walk over there and scan a thing or do a yeah. thing, and it tells you when to come back. If I have the Max Pass, can I check in on the Indiana Jones ride when I'm still in Toontown? Yes. Oh, see. Like, well, when you say check in, do you mean check into the ride? Yeah, yeah. Like, can I make my password? It'll tell me what time I need to show up to Indiana Jones yes. without being at Indiana you'll Jones. Click, you'll click on the Max Pass, and it'll show you what the available, the what the um, next available Max Pass or Fast Pass for the rides that are nearby are. You'll click on it, and it'll tell you when you can go to the ride. When you get there, it'll have a little like like a QR thing that you show to the people at the at the the line for Fast Pass. So not all the rides have fast passes. Most uh, of them okay. do, but not all of them. That makes sense. So is this line just as long as everybody else's line, or is it significantly no. shorter? It can be significantly shorter because you not had you won't be waiting hours for a ride. You'll be waiting minutes for a ride. Sometimes oh, you wow. still be, maybe wait thirty minutes, but if you think about it, all the people who are in the regular line are waiting an hour. Yeah, an hour. yeah. So that's something to keep in mind. And if you don't have a max pass, you weren't able to get a max pass, but you're like, oh, I really want to go on this ride. They have a single rider line at some of the rides because some of the rides have a certain amount of people they need in them. Right. And it would be an odd number, and you'll have an even number of people, or you'll have an odd number of people yeah. until they have an extra seat. And to make the ride work better, if it's full, if that, that ride is full – they'll bring an extra person in. So they have a single rider line at some of the rides. Like when That's you go smart. to Galaxy's Edge, the Millennium Falcon ride has a single rider line. line. That's smart. So, so they don't just have an empty that, ticket. If you guys okay. want to split up and go single rider, you can do that. Right. And you can get in and out and fast so they just don't have one one right. hole. Okay. That makes that makes kind of sense. I'll grab my churro. I'll go to the fast pass line. I can't wait to get a churro. The churro, 2.8 million churros a year sold there. And one of them is going to be in my stomach. They have just one, just one, just one just churro. One. I'm, I'm good for one churro, That's but good. they have this like lightsaber churro where the churro is yeah. the lightsaber. Yeah. So they have churros that are themed to any of the events that are going on. So last month it was the anniversary of Haunted Mansion. Mm -hmm. A bunch of different treats and snacks and foods that were Haunted Mansion themed. And so were the churros. That's so rad. Oh my gosh. So if you want to learn more about the food, there's a there's a YouTube channel called Magic Journeys. And they do all the food, like they review all the food, any special foods that are coming up. So you can see what they look like and how they taste. And they're pretty honest about it. Like one of the restaurants, the um, was it called the Hungry Bear in um, right which is that's near Splash Mountain, mm -hmm. they upgraded the food. They did a they did a vlog about it and talked about what they liked and what they didn't like. Um, so it's it's really fun. They've added a lot of vegetarian options at the park now too, so that there's less there's food that's not just you know beef. Right, know? right. Well, that'll make Matt and Lexi happy. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, they'll have to eat something, and it can't yeah. be. Um, actually, I think at Frontierland, all the plants in Frontierland are actually edible. Um, <laughs> no, they, I, I believe I believe that's they are. 
<laughs> I, I believe that's one of the fun facts I was looking at. So they'll be okay. You can just tell them to bring a packet of ranch, and they'll be they'll they'll be good to go. Is the is the Bear Time Jamboree still there? Sadly, no. It's at Walt Disney World, but about I think ten years ago they got rid of it in Disneyland, and now it's a ride that's called um, Pooh's Great Adventure or something. Oh, that sounds. So it's sad. Yeah, that Back one was sit. popular. That one was popular out here, and I've I never know, right. But I guess they didn't want to upgrade it and rebuild it, so they got rid of it. But they opened one in Walt Disney World, so I'm very excited to go see that. I missed it so much. Let me best. Oh, wow. Do they still have that it's... island out there? Are we going out to that island where you take that boat out to that island? Yes, the island is still there. It's supposed to, it was originally built as like Mark Twain themed. Yeah. So it was like, um, there's like a pirate's cave and stuff. And so then with the advent of the pirate, the Pirates of the Caribbean movie, they changed the theme a little to make it more just about the pirates. There used to be a fort that you could go into that was a big, giant old fort. And there was like actors in there pretending to be like from that time period. They closed it down. You can still walk up to it, but you can't go in it. Uh, okay. Aww. Okay. So you can, you can, I know. You can it's a bummer. To it. So uh, Je Jess, what are you looking forward to seeing there? Goofy. <laughs> that's right it's that's all great. about finding goofy which i think he's in toontown right be around the park and he will be there to take pictures with you and interact with you and it'll be fun so there are some characters that wander the park and so you'll see them you want to stop and you can talk to them and there are some that are implanted in certain areas right. so you never know where he's going to be um like peter pan there's a person that walks around the park as peter pan and he just is animated and he's confused by things but he still interacts with you that's, in the world. That's so cool. Um, and then they have what's called the um, the princess area. So it's this little cottage, and you can go in and you can get pictures with some of the princesses. That's so crazy. And you don't have to pay for any of it. It's free. That's I think cool. when I was there, when I was there, however many years ago it was, it was shortly after the Emperor's New Groove came out. Oh, nice. Which Dan has never seen. I have what? not. It's on Netflix, man. Go watch it. <laughs> oh, I man. know, right? Dan, I'm getting so it on stereo I, today. <laughs> when, when I was there, we saw Emperor Cusco was there. Oh. And it, so that was really cool. Like, I remember that. And I got my picture with Goofy when we were there, that was like my one goal. That was all I wanted and we got it right before we left. So I'm looking forward to that, but I'm also really, really, really looking forward to all the Halloween decorations. Like I have a feeling I'm just gonna get lost in taking photos of everything Halloween. Yes, it's gonna be that, they're, they're everywhere. And then the Haunted Mansion is themed from Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, so that's gonna be really, really cool. I think that's, love it. yeah, that's the get. And you've been to that one. No, no, you go at, you go at Christmas time. So it's not Halloween themed. No, right? it still is. They have it from, from October till the end of December because it's it's a Christmas Halloween themed thing that okay. that movie right so they can have it for the whole year almost mm, okay yeah just throw a just throw a Santa hat on Jack skeleton and some fleece yep. and then you're you're good to go yep exactly yeah see That's exactly you described the re the ride a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I. When I went, I went when I was 17 with some of my friends. Um, they graduated high school, and one of my friend's moms bought us a hotel there and tickets, and we were rambunctious. And I was on the Haunted Mansion, and I was standing up on the Haunted Mansion because, oh yeah, God. so I was standing up in the in the little half-dome things that you sit in, yeah. and somebody came out of nowhere just like that. Like, they're hiding in there, like in black outfits, and they're like, do you need to sit down? I'm like, whoa, who are you? I mean, they were there in seconds. Everywhere. They were there. They were there hiding yeah, they're... they probably have. I think they have actually security that wander the park dressed in plain clothes. You have no idea their security. So That's if something so happens, crazy. they can they can handle it quickly. Yeah, Jess, you might have to figure out where the lost and found is because at some point during the adventure, I'm gonna get grabbed by my scruff and taken somewhere. I'm sure <laughs> for oh, some sort yeah, of I'm mischief. Sure. Just don't stand up on rides, Dan. And you'll be perfectly. I fine. know. I was standing up on the ride, and the person was like not happy about it. But I guess I, you well, know. You yourself <laughs> i could have i could have been sucked into that escalator or whatever that thing there's, is that you ride on there's no filming on the rides there either you so. can film on the rides yeah. can no you? flash photography yeah wow. wow there are tons and tons of youtubers if you type in if you go on youtube and just type in the word disneyland you will see tons and tons of youtubers that go on rides and they film it Wow. See, they don't, the, the amusement park that I go to the most is yeah. Cedar Point and Cedar Point, none of the Cedar Fair parks, Cedar Point is so against that. Like if you, even yeah. if you're sitting in the coaster waiting for it to take off and you pull your phone out to take a selfie, they stop everything. They're like, put your phone away. Give me your phone. 
we got caught one time taking videos there and uh we had a digital camera and jamie actually they stopped us when we got back because they saw us taking the video when we were going up the uh -huh. hill and uh, they uh, took the camera from us and they're like you have to delete whatever footage you got and jamie's uh, like uh okay so he uh, went through and like deleted a couple of things off of there to make them think he deleted that footage but i guess he just deleted a couple pictures but yeah at the at cedar point and cedar point will pull your videos down if you yep. upload videos on youtube and you you've been videoing on their roller coasters they will pull the video down universal is the same way if you go to any of the universal parks universal studios they're the same way they do not want people doing it they just opened a new ride at universal studios florida that's based on the harry potter series right they had a lot of people who snuck video onto it and they finally just gave up and let it happen because it was just too much. There were too many people doing it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a thing. There are some companies or some like media companies that they allow to do it. They have like press passes, they have yeah. events and stuff. I yeah, mean, you could get those at Cedar Point. You can get a, you can apply for a press pass at Cedar Point, and then they have press days and times yeah. at Cedar Point where it's only that type of people yeah. there. But yeah, that's. I was wondering about that, so that's cool to know that I can so film on. So crazy. So they they made you delete the stuff off the SD card. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. I watched a documentary and when the dude came from north to south Korea at one of the stops they were making everybody delete their, their memory cards. And, oh, I bet. and it's just like that. It's just like that at, yeah. the, at the ride. I get it a little bit though, because one time I was so excited that somebody pulled the clothes off of Space Mountain and the ah. lights came on and then after I had seen it, I was like, That's neat, but then I'm like, Oh, disillusioned. I actually, I was on the ride once when it stopped and the lights came <gasps> on. And it was like, I felt so like I almost was in tears. I was like, you ruined the moment. Oh my gosh, was there a basketball <laughs> court? Was there a basketball I court? I in myself there? like they ruined it for us. It was so horrible. And like we were almost at the very end of the ride when it happened. So we were like really close to the end. So oh. they just pushed us through to the end. That's like you go again. Like yes, we're going again. <laughs> yes. But there was no basketball court in there. I heard there was a basketball court inside Space Mountain. Okay, so the, that's the, there's a story about a basketball court. You want to tell you the story? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so when they were building the Matterhorn at that time in the city of um, Anaheim, where Disneyland is located, there was a um, ordinance about the heights of the building, and they had to have certain meet certain like like policies and certain like rules. And one of them was if it went to a building went to a certain height, you had to have an activity center of some sort. So inside, or at least a long time ago, I don't know if it's still there or not, there is a one court basketball court inside of Matterhorn. <laughs> and if you got to, a, if you worked at the park for a certain amount of years, you and some of your fellow cast members could go up in there and get to shoot hoops. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. Wouldn't it have been more cost effective to put like a ping pong table in there or just a glove and a bat? <laughs> <laughs> you know? You know? I don't know what the reasoning was, but that's what it was. So if you actually Google, like, Matterhorn Basketball Court, you can find pictures of it. So I don't know if it's still there or not, because they went through a refurbishment about five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. So it may or may not still exist, but it did a long time ago. Oh, see, living in California, there's so many, like, myths and stuff that I've heard over the years. I, I heard that all the Disneyland characters, if you, were, if you were a cast member, that you had to wear the same underwear as everybody else to 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 be inside the suit, right? And this was true. Yeah. This was true until people started complaining about uh, getting like lice and scabies and stuff. And then the union decided in 2001 that they would make like a a cast approved underwear that you could wear underneath your, your suits because they didn't want people's underwears bunching up when they were when they were working, which is very considerate. Well, I mean, if you look at some of the outfits the princesses and the princes have to wear. You probably should be wearing a certain kind of out, uh, underwear so certain things don't show through. Right, right. But, oh, but, right. but you had to wear theirs and they kept washing it. But then the, like, I don't know, the 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 National Coalition of Wedgies got together and they're just like, this <laughs> <laughs> This isn't going to happen anymore, guys. So, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I, I, apparently everybody was sharing the same underwear for a while. I also heard that there was <laughs> Disneyland cats. There was cats at Disneyland. So what it is is the cats are there. They mainly sleep during the day. And they they're they're awake at night, so they're nocturnal. They're there to keep away rat, rats and mice and other rodents. That's so crazy. See? But then they don't have to worry about pest control that way. They've got these. It animals makes sense. Care of it. Yeah. So every once in a while, if you're lucky, you could be walking along and you look over at a bush or a plant, and you might see a cat in there hanging out, just chilling. Wow, cast That's member. True. Imagine like my cat strives 
to eventually make it one day to be working at Disneyland to catch mice. Like that has got to be well, the ultimate. They, in cats. They, they have breeds of cats that they like bring in. Like I think, and they probably just have them like breeding within the park. No, they're just the Aristocats. Yeah, what exactly. is it? That's, that's where the movie came from. They just got yeah. a bunch of cats from the, 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 the park. And, <laughs> yeah. and there's ducks that live on the property. So you'll see ducks every once in a while just wandering along. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with the ducks. If I saw a cat, I might try to take myself a Disneyland cat home. Oh, I don't think they, they're not very approachable. Like there was one, one time I saw one, it got within a few feet of me and meowed at me, but just was not interested in getting petted. It was not like your normal house cat or normal cat. You see that once attention, like they're like, they don't see that as something they want. They're, they're used to humans being around, but they won't take food from humans. So they're, they're like more like, what we have a lot of up here is barn cats. Yeah, exactly. It's like a barn cat, yeah. Yeah, except for now with the Star Wars theme in town, um, they're all hopped up on that blue milk. Oh, that sounds gross. Have you tried that yet? I haven't been there yet. Okay, it's you haven't been there since it year. opened, huh? Yeah, there's blue and green milk. It's like some sort of like coconutty milk or something like oh, that. I'm not a coconut fan, so I'm probably not going to have them. <laughs> I got to try it. I looked it up. It's $25 if you want the light-up souvenir cup with like eight eight or ten ounces of the stuff in it. So most of the drinks at most of the parks and most of the like places you get food, they have a souvenir cup of some sort. So you can pay a little extra to get the souvenir cup for your drink. But the thing is a lot of those things are refillable. Like they also have popcorn buckets you can get for popcorn and they're refillable. They had one a few weeks back or no, a few months back where it was a train. So you had the train car itself. That was, was a, was a popcorn bucket. And then they had one of the um, cars. It was a bucket and you could put them together and they moved oh, on. They had no wheels. way. Well, they yeah. better have a Halloween themed popcorn bucket. Cause I need a new popcorn bucket for you home. Have sure to. They probably do. Yeah. Cause that's it's happening. Haunted Mansion I... Because of Haunted Mansion. I already informed Dan that he's going to have to ship me a box of stuff home because I'm going to buy too much stuff that I'm not going to be able to take back on the airplane. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> you have to keep me away from the popcorn, though. I'm scared. You have to keep me away from the popcorn. I'll eat in, a, in a 30 minutes. I'll eat all the popcorn and then I'll have a stomach ache. And then I'm going to be like, you're going to have to carry me around like I'm Yoda on your back <laughs> through Star, through Star we Wars. We got to do that photo. We have to recreate the Star Wars. The one where Mark was on the back of oh, Daisy Ridley. Right. That, yeah, so we'll, re we'll, we'll re recreate that folder. So it have to be fast because I don't want to crush you. <laughs> I can't wait. Hey, Joel, I also heard that there was hidden Mickey heads there. Is that, is that one have a little no, bit more validity what's, what's to called, it? What's, it's called Mick, hidden Mickeys, and they're the little symbol of Mickey Mouse. And they're in certain areas of the park. You can actually, I don't know if they still sell it, but they actually have a book you can get at the park. It's not very expensive. And it has, like, in the back of the book, it has, like, a little scavenger hunt you can do while you're at the park. Mm -hmm. And you can, like, try and find them. And it'll give you clues on where they're located. Some of them are easy to find and some of them are hard. When you're at the, the one that I know that, that I love the most is when you're at the Haunted Mansion, just before you go on the ride, you go into this waiting area, and there's these wall sconces on the wall. Uh -huh. If you stand underneath them and look up, they make the shape of Mickey. I will oh, have to. So cool. I will have to see that, and that's when you go in and everything drops before you get to the. Before you get to the drop. Am I dropping, or is or is just the ceiling going up? Am I dropping in the haunted mansion? <laughs> do you want me to to break the myth for you and tell you what's really going uh, on? I think I do. For everybody at home, <laughs> it's I an elevator. I okay, so and I am going moving down below the building, and then you're walking through a hallway, and you're no longer in the ha the, the the mansion. The mansion is just a set piece. There's a building behind the mansion. That's where you're going into. Oh my when gosh! You're on the ride. Are you serious? <laughs> I'm serious. Wow, that yeah, that's you right look at up an there. Aerial map of Disneyland on Google. You'll see that there's this box, this big box building that's behind the mansion. That's the actual ride. Holy cow! I haven't been this shocked since Santa Claus. <laughs> you just, I just put your mind, huh? Oh my gosh, a little bit. Yeah, you did a little bit. Oh, I all for this. I, and you know, now that I think about it, that thing's not big enough for the ride. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh, they win again. They win again. I also heard that they dug Disneyland really deep into the ground, so you can't look up and see anything but more Disneyland. You can't see freeways. You can't see anything outside of Disneyland. It's all lowered, and everything's up high, so you can only see Disneyland. It's not that it's lower and it's they've made everything really high or they've done a lot of forced perspective stuff that keeps you from seeing the outside world. So you don't know it's there. It's the same when you go to like, when you go into the actual new Star Wars land, you can't tell that the other lands exist because of the way they set up everything. And if you look at pictures from when the park first opened and you look at pictures of it now, you can see they planted a lot of stuff in the beginning that they knew would grow 
that would create the illusion of not being in the real world. Mm -hmm. So when they first opened it, you saw a lot of plants and trees, but they were really tiny, really small, and you could see everything, and you could see the parking lot, and you could see the streets. But as things grew and they built more around it, it became where you left reality. I love so it. So cool. I love it. I love it. See, okay. Another thing that too is I heard that they pump a bunch of smells into Main Street. So like, what it is is in Main Street they have a few food places, and so what they do is they make sure some of that smell from those food places waft into the hall, into the walkway that is Main Street. So you're smelling the bakery because they actually have a bakery that works there. They have a few bakeries that work on property. So you're smelling the food that's being cooked and made in the property. See, and then they come out these little exhaust pipes. And here's how here's how I'm going to eat all day long. I'm just going to wrap my mouth around one of these exhaust pipes and the food particles, <laughs> the food particles are just going to go inside They're me. And then I'm going to be. They're vents and they yeah. probably notice you standing in front of this weird vent. Uh-huh. <laughs> with a big old mohawk with my mouth on it. <laughs> But you can try. I, yeah, they're going to be on the radio. It's like, oh, we got another one trying to eat. I'm trying to eat you for free. You don't know which one is the vent that's actually pumping out the smell, but you could try. Okay. But you're going to be a, become a breatharian? I'm going <laughs> to now. I'm, that's, you know what? He's right. We could do it. We could, live, we could be breatharians and live off the molecules of the churro or the popcorn. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, is there something there that you recommend us trying? Because all I know is churros, popcorns, and sticky lemon drinks. Is there something else that we don't know about that we should be eating? I think. Um... I we should, Dan's thought, only worried about the food, if you notice that. What yeah, else should we be eating? You saw what happened at Vid, else. <laughs> What about VidCon that first so year? There's remember? in New Orleans Square, which is right next to Haunted Mansion, you can get a beignet, which is like a donut. Yes. Those are really great. It's a little shop right near the um, where the train, train stops off at and right near the Haunted Mansion in New Orleans Square. Oh, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in for the French Jonah. What else do you recommend, Joel? Do you do you have like a favorite ride or a favorite thing that like people don't usually know about? One of the favorite rides that me and my friends love to go on. You've already talked about it. Is Haunted Mansion. Mm -hmm. Another favorite ride is Big Thunder Mountain. Um, another one is Pirates of the Caribbean, and then Space Mountain. Wow, I'm surprised that Indiana Jones did not make the list. Oh, it's on the list. It's just the lower it's down. It's just the lower. I loved Indiana Jones. I'm always playing with the flaccid stalactites and stalagmites that are there. <laughs> I like, I've, that oh, too. yeah, I'm always grabbing on those on those things. And then I realize how many people There's have touched this, them. In that big circular room, and they have the rope over this, yes. like, this shaft, and you pull on it, and you hear someone falling. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, the, line, the cool lines The lines are going to be so fun, Jess. You're going to have so much fun with me in line. Dan, don't. It's Wait, just, what, it, what it's going to be fun anyway. What do you say to Kira? No, don't stop. Put it down. Yeah, right. Don't eat that. Take that out of your mouth. Stop yeah. it. Don't yes. Do that. Oh wait, well, Dan, you might. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's exactly what I'll be doing. Dan, stop. Don't knock it off. Wash Take that your hands ball. off that. Yes. Yeah. Wash your hands. What are you doing? <laughs> you need to get like one of those body harness things that you can put on him to keep it on. With, with a little leash. Yes. Um, oh, another food that you'll need to get. You'll have to have is the Dole Whip. Yes. Doesn't so that taste like banana? No, it's like a it's like an orange flavor, but they have one that has mango as well. What? Yeah, oh, that's but it's it. actually really good. It's so good. It's like a it's like a soft serve ice cream that's got like an orange flavor to it. I'm in. Okay, I can do that. Like an orange Julius. So, yeah, um, well, not like an orange Julius. That's more like a shake. This is more like a soft serve ice cream. Hey Joel, is orange Julius a, a, a California thing, or is this across the country? People know what that is. I was when I was a kid we had it in San Diego and it slowly disappeared from San Diego and when I moved up here to Seattle I was very excited to see it again. Nice. So it's up here in this area. Okay, so it's 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 around West Coast, but it might not be an East Coast. I don't, I don't think we I don't think we have them here. We, I know we had one in Arizona. We had one in the mall food court that yeah. I worked at in Arizona. Yeah, yes. oh, okay. Yeah. They were really yeah, popular. It's a regional though. thing. Like in and out, it's a regional thing. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Like okay. Culver's? Yeah, I've see, heard of that. What is that? Yeah, see, we yeah, don't see, get you, that. We don't, don't get have that. Uh -oh. <laughs> no, what is that? It's a Wisconsin-based fast food chain where they, they sell butter burgers and cheese curds. Butter? So you're eating a burger that's just butter? It's no. butters the, or the bun? <laughs> the butter's on the bun. And oh. then they sell deep-fried cheese curds, and it's amazing. Oh, okay. See, oh, But okay. it's it's very much a... It's very much a Midwest thing. I am. I am in. I'm going to eat so, so much food. Hey, Joel, um, am I pulling the sword out of the thing? Because I, I I see people try to pull the sword out of the thing. Does it come out once a day for somebody? So they have once a day. They have some people, some characters come through. I forget which ones. I think it might be Merlin. And they pick a little kid from the crowd oh. or a few kids from the crowd to pull it out. Me. 
but it sits there. Just anyone can go up and take a picture with it and try and pull it out. But once a day, they have like a little setup where they have Merlin and a few other characters come out. And any kids that are around, they'll point at some kids and they'll bring them up to it and they'll have them try and pull it. And it comes out? And for one of them, at least one of them, it pulls out a little bit. Not all the way. It pulls out like maybe like three or four inches. Oh, okay. And then it stops. Yeah. Then it stops. Just if I could get picked for that, I would be, I'd be in heaven. Would you make a TikTok? I would, it would make my day. (laughs) That's what it would do. (laughs) It would definitely make, make my, make my day. Um, I have, I need more advice. How do I keep from rolling my ankles on main street? Oh, that's not as much of a problem anymore. They've actually recently redid the street. So you don't have to worry about rolling your ankles in the, um, tracks. So it's a little more smooth. They've gotten rid of some of the, um, actual, um, sidewalk, um, like curbs in some areas. So it's more, you just walk smoothly from one area to another. So you don't have to worry about tripping and falling. Yeah. There you go, Dan. You're good to go. Well, yeah, that's that's going to be me. I don't want to be tripping and falling. What, what's the point of those of those trams? Do they go around the whole park? No, they just go through Main Street and up to the castle and back. And they're really fun. If you're tired and you've had a long day, there's something. One of the things that my friends and I used to like to do sometimes is when we get to the park, one of the first things we do is we get on the train to go over to Haunted Mansion. And we take the train all the way over. And it's like three stops and you're there or one stop and you're there. Um, so if you're tired of walking, there's lots of things you you can do like you can get on the train in some area and take the train around the park and get to another stop in another area. See, yeah. But if you're in Main Street, they have a car and a trolley car and a double decker bus that go around Main Street and up to the castle and back. Let's see, that's a and then Disneyland is it Cinderella's castle in Disneyland or is it Sleeping Beauty's castle? It's Sleeping Beauty's castle. Cinderella is okay. Disney World. So oh my gosh, really? There's yeah. a difference. I would have if somebody would have asked me what the castle is, it's Cinderella's castle. No, I knew there was a difference. I thought it was Sleeping Beauty's castle at Disneyland. Yeah, Sleeping Beauty's castle, and inside the castle, they have a walkthrough thing that's like the story of Sleeping Beauty, and has all these little like windows you can look through with these animatronic things and lighting effects. So if you want to just like take an inside tour of the, of the of the castle, you can walk through that. On the Disneyland logo, the silhouette is not the castle at Disneyland; it's the castle at the Disney World. No, the the, the castle at Disneyland silhouette is the castle at Disneyland. Okay, there's just a yes. different. Okay. Yeah, and the castle at Disney World is a bigger castle, and it has extra spires. It has one extra spire that's gold, and it's a little longer. Um, but that 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 castle has an actual restaurant inside of it. Mm. What about the castle on the cover of The Little Mermaid? Where do I find that at? I don't know. I think that is the castle. It's a generic symbol of the castle. It's- it's under the sea. I want to see that. I want to see that castle before they change the before they change the box art. I want, I want to see that castle. <laughs> oh, you missed that change. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, I missed that change. Okay, I would have lost a million dollars on answer this question. I'll give you a million dollar game show because I did not think that that's what was there. The coolest castle that I want to see is in is in Paris. It has a uh, a store in it, but underneath it, underground, they have a dragon. Ooh, really? That, that's really yes. cool. Is it peaked? No, it's, no, it's probably Maleficent's dragon. Yeah, it's Maleficent's dragon, and it like breathes. Fi- it doesn't breathe fire, but it has smoke come out of its mouth, and it opens its mouth and opens its eyes. It looks like it's like resting in the, in this like this like cave and stuff. It's really cool. Oh my gosh, that is awesome. What about nightlife for us? Because I heard the park's open till eleven. So Disneyland has some things going on. They have a, an event called Fantasmic, and it takes place on Tom Sawyer's Island, right next to New Orleans Square, and it's a light and water show. If you were to be going to Disney, uh, to California Adventure, they have a themed, um, like, dance party going on all night that's called the Oogie Boogie Bash. So Oogie Boogie from, from, oh, my brain just blanked, from (laughs) Nightmare Before Christmas. Mm -hmm. That's in, that's in, that's in Disney California Adventure. And they were only doing that certain, certain nights when I looked it up. Oh, yeah, okay. certain nights, and you have to pay a little extra to go do that yeah. separate from the tickets. That's so right. People can go in just that night to see it, and it goes yeah. on for like a three, like for two hours, and they wait, and then they come back on and do more dancing and stuff. Okay. I did it once before. It's really fun. They have some fun mixed drinks that are themed to the the event. They have DJs. They have live music. Right. Um, it's really fun. Does that but go again, pretty late? It's an extra ticket. It's what? Is that does that go pretty late? It goes as late as the park is open. Yeah. Okay, okay. So you just go That's there a few hours. Adventure, not at Disneyland. Gotcha, gotcha. I also read that you cannot 
you cannot wear any if you're an adult you cannot wear any disney themed like cosplay outfits or or uh any kind of like prin- princess outfits into the park at all only on certain events when they have so like right now they have the disney they have the oogie boogie bash going mm-hmm. on so at the oogie boogie bash you can dress up um they have the tr- they they have their own trick or treat sort of thing where you can go around and get tr- treats and at certain nights of the week you can dress up but only that during those time periods can you dress up. And you have to make sure your outfit is not exactly like if you're one of the characters at the park. Right. So if it looks too much like a Disneyland character, like if it's too accurate to what the Disneyland character is wearing, they won't let you wear it because then people will think you are representing the park. And if you act a certain way, which goes against the way the park wants the character to act, then that's where you can get in trouble. Oh, yeah. So if I looked like somebody and I was running around, they would not be approved of what I would have to say to if these children. If you look too much like Gaston or Maleficent, like too right. much like the actual character, they might not let you in. But if it's like, hey, this is my version on Maleficent, and it's this bright, shiny thing with like LED lights and stuff, they'll be like, that's fine. You're, but it's yeah, only you're... during those events. Right. So like every day, so that's why this idea of Disney bounding became a thing. So you wear an outfit that has the color scheme of that character and the, the shape of that character's outfit that you can wear into the park. And that way you are, in a way, dressing up, but you're not looking like the actual character. Okay. Right. That makes sense. Do you have any other pro tips for us? Like, do I need to not bring certain things? No selfie sticks. I know that. <laughs> um, let me think off the top of my head what else that would be good for you to know. Um, Man, Jess, this is going to be – this is almost like we have to prepare, like, mentally and physically to go to the After happiest. we go through two days of intense, like, educational stuff, then we're going to go Yeah. If you want to, like, understand what it's like to be at the park, there are lots of different YouTube channels that do it. I have a playlist of all the times I've been to the park you yes. can look at on my YouTube channel, okay. but there's – there's one called Fresh Baked. They're, they're a group of people that go almost every day, and they do videos of the whole park. Yeah, Jess's eyes got big. Yeah, they're there almost every day. And what they'll do is they'll, they'll spend a day at the park, and then they'll, they'll cut that up into like five to ten minute videos that they then post on their YouTube channel. Oh, wow. yeah. They talk about stuff going on at the park, and they talk about the things they're doing and their favorite parts about the park, and they show everything that's going on. And they have an actual video that they put out once a week showing all the different construction of new things going on. So like when the when the um, when they were building the Star Wars Galaxy's Edge Park, they were going to parts of the park where you could see them building it and they were looking at it and seeing what was gonna happen to it. Wow. So see, yeah, that, that's a fun thing to go to. That's but really if you cool. want to do something at the park other than the Blue Bayou, there's a few other restaurants you can eat at in the park and some of them are called character dining. So you'll have characters coming around while you're eating your food and saying hello to you that you can interact with and take pictures at. So that's something else to keep in mind if you want to do a, another sit-down place to eat. See, that would be so rad because I could get spaghetti and hopefully the lady and the tramp lady is there and we can both suck <laughs> noodles together. That would be amazing. That's a great imagination, but that's not usually what I've heard. I love it. That's a great imagination as you pat me on the top of the head and send me on my way. Oh, damn. <laughs> Oh, damn. There's a lot of crazy things. Do you remember just at VidCon a handful of years ago when I was talking to my friend Leo and Brittany was like, oh, my gosh, that's the dude from Disneyland. Uh, what, what, he was Gus Stevens. Who's, who's Beauty and the Beast? The, the dude. Oh, Gaston. Gaston. Yeah, so he was that for a while there. He was that character for a while. Nailed it. And then he's yeah. part of this other group. And there's groups, I think, in every town, right? And they have different colored jackets on. And, and they're a part of a group. And they only hang out. It's almost like a game, but not a game. And they yes. only hang out in certain parts of Disneyland with their themed colors and their jackets. And it's a big, like, to-do. You can't – and not anybody can just do it. Yeah, so actually there was a point in time. And I, I don't know if they still do it, but there was a place called the Carnation um, Canopy or the Carnation um, Center it was run. It was it was sponsored by the Carnation Breakfast Company. Who makes those breakfast like shakes. Oh yeah. The place you could eat food, and they had a have a live band, and so a lot of people started doing swing dancing there. And so they would buy a ticket to Disneyland, go into the park, and spend all night swing dancing. Mm, okay, that's that's. But cool. when they but they closed it down and they made it into the place where the princesses have their pre- princess meet and greet. So I don't know if they still do the dancing there or not. But that's how I met a few of my friends that I have from the parks. So I have two friends that I met because of that, because my brother was into swing dancing. And so we went one night and I got to hang out with some, a couple there. And so we're fast friends and we like talk a lot about Disneyland and they're gonna actually be at Walt Disney World while we're there. So they're gonna meet up with us when me and my friends are there for Walt Disney. That's so cool. That is so cool. cool. 
You have a lot yeah, there's of even there's even people that do groups where they wear jackets, like even for Funko. Like Funko, there's this thing called Funko fiends, and they have like these like um like jean jackets and they look like a biker jacket too, when it's like a theme, and so they all have like stuff like that. So it's a thing. There's groups like that everywhere. Wow. That's so cool. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna have so much fun. I don't even know how to dress. I don't even know what the weather's gonna be like there. Hot. It's probably still gonna be warm, but bring a jacket just in case or an umbrella because it could still rain i don't mind if it rains i'm gonna just dance in the rain like nobody's <laughs> watching and so is every other person there at disneyland right. we're all gonna dance like no one's watching in the rain. you can do that but you're, <laughs> just in case bring a jacket or a poncho to put on okay keep yourself dry don't don't do the thing i did one year and forget the jacket and we're in the park, and it's pouring rain, and so I buy a $25 poncho I can get for $5 at Walgreens. Right. It's biodegradable. <laughs> I and... still have that poncho because I am going to use that thing as much yeah, as I, I would never get rid of it. No, I'm surprised <laughs> Disneyland didn't make it fall apart after, like, two inches of rain. It's like, oh, after after so much wetness, it falls apart, and you got to buy another <laughs> it <disintegrates>. one. <laughs> yeah, it disintegrates. Or you could buy more poncho time. It's like, how much? Let me go to the app. How much for more poncho time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of buying things in the park. If you guys want to, if you guys forget to bring a battery pack for your phones or mm-hmm. anything else, they actually sell. Do I have one still? I don't know if I still. They have sell one. power anyway, by the watt. <laughs> they sell a battery pack by it's called Fuel Rod, uh-huh. and you pay pay I think twenty bucks, and it's good for use at any time in the park. And when it runs out, you go to one of the access points, you drop the the fuel rod in there and you get a new fresh battery pack. Yeah, that's rad. Oh, that's cool. That's super rad. Yeah, and they actually have it at some airports now too. So it's becoming a thing in some other places. So I have one and that's what I can use. So if I forget my actual battery pack, which I now have own two of, but just in case that's something else you can use at the park. Right. Cause you'll always have a rod. If you have one right now on you, yep. you can trade it in for, for a fresh one. Yep, I could. If I still have, I think I still have it somewhere. So I have to make sure I bring it with me to Walt Disney World. <laughs> oh, okay. So here's the deal. I I am a kid in a candy store sometime, and I'm gonna want to start purchasing all kinds of crazy things. Well, what, reel me back in. What do I need? Okay, I need to get some ears on this mohawk. Like I need to get some cool ears. But like, what rad stuff? I don't want a T-shirt or anything. What rad stuff do you you do you show up with? See, so you have. I'm looking at a picture of you right now, and you have traditional ears. Yes, I have my traditional ears, which you can get embroidered with your name. These are the traditional ears, and Jess has some of the mini ears. Yeah. So they have different themed ones you get. Like, she's got the Nightmare Before Christmas one. If you want to, you can actually go on Etsy, and there's people who make ears, special ears, that they make that are themed with. Like, I have a friend. He and his wife go on the Disney cruises, and she makes some Disney Cruise Line ears that she makes that are really fun to look at. They're really oh, cool the way she makes them. So they have that nautical theme to them. Um, if you want, don't want to get a shirt and you don't want to just get this, they have things like ornaments. So you can buy ornaments for Christmas if you want. Um, they have their own Funko Pops. I'm trying to think. There's lots of different things you can get. But if you want to, you can always, if there's a Disney store or Disney outlet near where you live, you can go buy the thing you want to buy beforehand so you can wear it at the park. Oh, gotcha. That's something to keep in mind. They have a thing now that's called the Spirit Jersey. It's just a sweatshirt that's a little bit oversized, and it has a, they're all different themes, and they'll have the word Disneyland or the name of some other theme thing on the back of them in bold letters along the back of it along the shoulder blades. Um, and that's a fun thing nowadays to do, too. Oh, see, that'll, that'll be cool. I want something more tangible. I want, like, a print on my wall, or I want, like, a picture or something, because I think I'm going to get all this Disney. that you can buy. Yeah, I'll, I'll get some something. Some prints you can buy, but the print, if you're talking about, like, a print, a really nice print, those are hundreds of thousands of dollars. Oh. They do sell them at the park. <clears throat> they have this really cool thing. They have these little dioramas, so you can buy one of the, um, it's like a set piece. It's like a little to- toy set, and it's a diorama of one of the different rides, and it'll have little, like, like a little picture of one of the scenes, like in a, like a 3d format that you oh, can buy at part two. That's, that's kind of cool. I know somebody in my life that collects the snow globes there and I think yes. they're like so super the rare. Yeah. And then also in uh, Tomorrowland, right after you get off the star tours ride, they have a spot where you can make a little mini um, figure of um, one of the droids, one of the R2 units mm-hmm. that's there available. I think I have one. Do I have it here? No, it's, it's at work. <laughs> <laughs> But you can make one of those, and it's like ten dollars. Um, oh, I feel like people to do. I feel like you're gonna spend so much money, Jess. 
Yeah, I have that feeling. You, too. I think you're just gonna start. It's gonna be like supermarket budget. sweep. Have a budget so that you stick with your budget, oh. so you don't overspend. Yeah. <laughs> there's lots of things you can do at the park. If you're someone like I know Diana, she she's gonna be going with you guys. That's right. Yes. yes. Can't you really can't do rides that shake a lot. So there's lots of things you can do at the park that don't involve going on rides. So there's like doing the pictures with the princesses or one of the characters. There's like there's some rides that don't do a lot of movement. Like it's a small world. Um, so there's lots of things. There's some people who don't go on rides. There are some people I know who do go to, to the park and they never go on rides. They do everything else except go on the rides. So yeah. it's possible to do something that doesn't involve going on a ride. I Just don't. I, I'm good with the Haunted Mansion. I would like to go to Small World. I want to see what's going on at the new Star Wars thing. And I didn't get to see the new... I have not been to the new Star Wars... The old ride. The uh, what's Star the, Tours? I have not been to the new Star Tours. Otherwise, I don't care. I'll just... I'm just... I just want to be there. I don't care. I don't have to go on all yeah. the crazy rides. Yeah, go on the rides you want to go on. And like I said, if you go on YouTube and type in the name of the ride, you'll find someone that's done a video of it. And you can see what the ride is like and decide, yeah, I want to go on that ride. Or, oh, no, I do not want to do that ride. So any final advice for us? Take your time. You're going to be walking a lot, but like I said, if you want to, you can do things like take the train, get off your feet for a while. There are some things you can go into that are sort of like theaters where you can sit down and watch things occur so you don't have to be walking. So just take your time. There's there's even like two boats that go around the river that's around the, the island that you're talking about. Go and sit on those for a while to rest. So remember... Take your time. There's benches everywhere to sit down. There's parades going on. So keep in mind when the parade is, that's a good time to go to certain parts of the park and go on certain rides because people will be going, especially with their kids, to the parade. So if you don't want to do parades, just stay away from Main Street as much as possible because that's where all the parades are at. I'm not the biggest parade fan. What about you, Jess? Well, no, not yeah, I'm really. Not a parade fan either. I'm like, eh. Yeah. No. I mean, if I brought I seven to kids sit, with me, stand it somewhere for like five or ten minutes watching someone walk by me when I could be going on a ride. Right. right. That's for parents with kids, and they don't want a parent. They're like, dude, I'm done for a minute here. You stare at this while I sit there and <laughs> wonder how I saved up money for seven years to take you guys into this expensive place called Sticky Land. Fun. I hope. I look forward to seeing all your Snapchats and Instagrams and videos that you're gonna do. So it'll be fun. It, it's gonna probably be me being super manic. And then you guys all just laughing and pointing. You should do that. You should have someone carry around a video camera of you just being manic. And that's your next video for your YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> if he ever learns how to upload videos. Ouch. Ouch. Oh. On that note, thank you, Joel, for coming. <laughs> thank you for coming. we got to get you back in here more often. You're super nerd aficionada. You'll give us the comic book updates. You go to all the cool movies that we talk about going to and never go. So we got pretty on here at least like once a month so you can catch us up on all things all things nerdy. Fun, yeah. yeah, it was fine. So follow Joel at Joel the Geek on Instagram. And is your uh, YouTube page still the same name? Yep, it's Joel the Geek. So if you just type in YouTube and type in Joel the Geek, We'll bring up there as well. I'm going to go watch all your playlists for Disneyland so I can D up. Is that what you would call it? I could Disneyland up <laughs> and make sure that I have. First thing is probably not what you want to be saying. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like to take that out of context. So. All right, guys, that'll do it for this week's episode of the CC Mouse Podcast. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at CC Mouse Podcast. Leave us a question on SpeakPipe at speakpipe.com slash CC Mouse Podcast. Buy our merch. Merch is almost sold out, guys. I, 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 I noticed that it's almost sold out. So go to CC Mouse Podcast dot shop and on that note we'll see you guys next week which will be our last week before vid summit as you like pause you're like wait am i, I was that right? looking at you for some i was looking at you to say something <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see you guys next week same mouse time same mouse podcast bye yay we did a thing we did a thing <laughs> m-o-n-e-y m-o-u-s-e